Hello good people, it's me Kumo Nawayo, Money Manager. Today I want us to look at the New Retirement Act. The New Retirement Act which was enacted last year, October 2022, which replaced the Retirement Act 2014. 14. And I want us to look at the changes that have been made, more especially the ones relating to the encashment of benefits. But before we do that, let us try to understand the different ways of being a member to a pension fund. There are three ways of being a member to a pension fund. The first membership is what we call an active member. You are an active member if you're actively contributing towards the pension fund. This happens when you are still fully employed and you contribute on a monthly basis. You contribute a certain percentage of your salary and and also your employer contributes a certain percentage on your behalf. While I was employed by FNB, I was a member of the FNB uh, pension fund and I contributed 7% of my uh, income on a monthly basis while my employer contributed 12% towards my pension uh, benefits, towards my retirement. Therefore, I was an active member because I was actively contributing on a monthly basis. The second way of being a member to a pension fund is what we call a deferred member. Let me give you an example. 20 2021 I left uh, FNB and I became a deferred member. You become a deferred member if you are no longer actively contributing. However, you've selected to leave your accrued benefits with the pension fund so they can continue accruing interest or any some returns on your behalf but you are no longer actively contributing. So right now I am a deferred member of FNB pension fund because my benefits are still in there and they're earning a little bit of a return. You might ask me why why I decided to leave my uh, um, accrued benefits with FNB. Uh, for me, it was because of um, the rules of the fund. They were quite favorable. And also, FNB is quite a big bank. Therefore, the pension fund is also sizable, meaning that it enjoys some economies of scale in terms of fees and all these other things. So this is why I decided to also leave my pension, my accrued benefits with FNB. And also, the second thing that I liked about the FNB pension fund is that the retirement age is 50 rather than the 60 and the 55. So meaning that at 50, I can start accessing my deferred benefits. And then the third way of being a member to a pension fund is what we call a pensioner. You are now a pensioner. You are a pensioner when you reach the uh, the fund's um, retirement age. In my case here, I've said that FNB retirement age is 50. So when I reach the age of 50, I'll become a pensioner and I'll start receiving a monthly payout from my benefits. So what happens when you reach your retirement age or when you become a pensioner is that all your accrued benefits are going to be taken and are going to be used to purchase what is called a retirement annuity which is going to pay you on a monthly basis so these are the three ways of being a member to a pension fund now that we understand the three ways of being a member to a pension fund let's look at the regulation let's look at the act there are some new um, enhanced encashments that only applies to deferred members this is why you have to understand the member the, two, the different types of membership because the new provisions that have been made in terms of the act they only apply to deferred members so you're gonna have to understand am I a deferred member to a certain pension fund or where do I fall in terms of the three types of membership to a pension fund so there's the new provisions that have been made we're going to look at clause number 52 of the retirement act and then we're going to go through the three main 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 changes that have been made that are affecting you and me if you are a deferred pension member. So the first change that has been made is in terms of clause number 52 see and this clause speaks to defaulting on your loan that is your personal loan there's been changes where in terms of what you can access in terms of the 2014 um, regulation or act you're only allowed to access one third of your accrued benefits but now you can access 100 percent of your deferred benefits if you are experiencing some financial difficulties or if you are defaulting on your loans you can access 100 percent of this money to pay off your debt. That's a very important piece of information that you have that you need to appreciate right there. However, there are some conditions that you have to meet for you to gain 100% access to this money. The first condition is that you need to prove that you've been unemployed for six consecutive months. Why do you need to prove that? Because that is where the financial difficulty is coming from. Because you do not have a stable income for you to continue servicing your debt. This is what is leading to financial difficulties. So as long as you can prove that then while well, you are good and then the second condition that you have to 
meet is that you have to prove that the deferred, the accrued benefits are sufficient to cover the entire loan. So you are not going to part pay the loan. You need to be able to pay off the entire loan from your accrued benefits. And the third condition that you have to meet is that it has to be your first time request. You cannot ask for more than once. You just ask once and then you are done. So this is what relates to defaulting on your other loans beside your mortgage. Second chain speaks to clause number 52D. This one speaks to your mortgage. Your mortgage here, we are referring to your primary residence. That is your place of residence where you live. So here, if you're experiencing some financial difficulties in terms of paying the mortgage or covering the mortgage, you can access the money to pay off the mortgage. You can access your benefits to pay off the mortgage. This is a new provision that has been made for you and me, the deferred members. However, you also need to meet those conditions. Remember, I've spoken about those conditions. So the same conditions, you have to meet them. You have to prove that you've been unemployed for six consecutive months. You also have to prove that your deferred accrued benefits are sufficient to cover the mortgage. You also need to prove that this is your first time request. And also, if you maybe you are a deferred member to more than two uh, pension funds, that is maybe you were employed by X and employed by a Y and you all you have got a deferred you are def and you've got benefits with both of them you can only access this from one fund you cannot go to fund A and fund B and say no I want to access my deferred benefits to pay off my mortgage you can only do that with one fund a fourth condition is that once you've done this you've done it you can no longer go back and ask if in the future maybe you're experiencing more financial difficulties so it's a one-time request you do it once and you do it once and also need to know that once you have encashed you will never encash again you will never encash again until you reach your retirement age that is when you're going to have access to your money this is now the one that relates to your mortgage the third piece of the new regulation relates to medical expenses this is clause number 52h which says that if you become terminal ill you can access your benefits this time around you're not accessing 100% of your benefits you can access up to 50% of your benefits to cover your medical expenses however if you're terminally ill also there's some conditions that you have to satisfy you need to make sure that um, there's a medical practitioner who is certifying that indeed you are terminally ill that's when you're going to have access to the benefits to pay off your medical expenses these are three most important pieces of information that I felt that we all need to know because you'll never know when you're going to face financial difficulties and this is something that you can tend to if or ever you are faced with that kind of a situation. Also now with the changes in the Retirement Act and with this enhancement in encashments that are affecting some other regulations as well. So income tax is being affected and also the Superannuation Regulation Act of 2001 is also being affected. Here the most most important change is that when you reach your retirement age, you are only allowed to encash one third of your accrued benefits as a lump sum, but that is now changing. You now encash 50% of your accrued benefits as a lump sum when you retire. So that is a very important, also a big change because from one third to 50%, that is really massive. When you change to employment, you're also allowed to encash a certain percentage of your benefits. Now there's been some changes uh, there's been an increase from the 5,000 from a minimum of 5,000 or 25 percent of your benefits you can now encash a minimum of 25,000 or 25 percent of your benefits this happens when you change your employers if, uh, when you change your employer you go to another employer you've got access to your accrued benefits that's a topic for another day I don't want to talk about it but if you may ask me yes I've accessed my funds when I changed employers I always make sure I get my money. But I'm not saying that you should go out there and get your money. As long as you get your money and also you invest it in something that can give you better returns than where it was going to be invested, then you can do that. As long as you're prudent in managing your money, I don't have a problem with that. But if you don't know if you're going to take the money for consumption, then it's a total drawback. Underline that. And also, there's been an increase in terms of the minimum threshold that you can in-cash at your retirement from the current pension of 5,000 per annum to 20,000 per annum. That's also a very important piece of information right there that you need to understand. I think this is pretty much what you need to understand when it comes to the new changes that have been made 
please, 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 please make sure that you familiarize yourself with this regulation. You just need to go on the internet, Google the Retirement Act October 2022, download it and have it there. Read it as much as you can so that nothing is a surprise, so that you are aware of what you can do and what you cannot do with your retirement benefits. This is all that I wanted to share with you today. I hope you find this video very insightful and it will aid you in terms of managing your retirements. Please, we all need to be planning a better retirement anything that can help you guys make sure you have it at your fingertips so you can refer to it now and then this is all that i had for you don't forget to leave a comment and a like for me thank you very much for watching i will see you in another video